Hello, I'm Sandra Adams, a pulmonologist and the founder of the Wipe Diseases Foundation. This is the third in a series of videos, the first one on tactile fremitus, why it's increased and decreased in different conditions. The second one was on percussion, learning the best technique. Now let's see if you can apply what you've learned about percussion and tactile fremitus to identify different clinical conditions based on these examination findings. Now, what if a patient had the following physical exam findings? Normal breath sounds, tactile fremitus, and percussion throughout his entire left lung. But in the lower two-thirds of his right lung, he has dullness to percussion and increased tactile fremitus. What do you think he has? So this is dullness to percussion on the right side and increased tactile fremitus on the right side. So does he have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease? Does he have a pleural effusion, pneumonia, a pneumothorax, pulmonary edema, or pulmonary fibrosis? What do you think? Well, the correct answer is pneumonia. He has dullness to percussion because the pneumonia or consolidation is liquid from the pus and exudative material. And it's increased tactile fremitus because that fluid is inside the lung. So therefore, the sound waves travel through the bronchus, hit the fluid in the lung, and take off to your hand. Therefore, the tactile fremitus is increased if fluid is inside the lung or consolidation like pneumonia. Now, let's talk about another patient. Normal breath sounds, tactile fremitus, and percussion throughout the entire left lung again, but this time, the lower two-thirds of his right lung, he has reduced tactile fremitus, and this time, hyper-resonance to percussion. What do you think he has? Same set of options, decreased fremitus, and hyper-resonance to percussion. What do you think? The correct answer is pneumothorax. Why is fremitus decreased in pneumothorax? Well, there's a pocket of air there, and we know that sound doesn't travel very well through air. And so, because the air is between the visceral and parietal pleura, when you feel on the patient's chest, the tactile fremitus will be decreased. Why is it hyperresonance to percussion? Well, again, there's air there. And we know that the lung is resonant, and if there's extra air there, then you call that hyperresonance. So the correct answer would be pneumothorax. Now we've got another patient. Same thing on the left, normal breath sounds, tactile fremitus, and percussion throughout his entire left lung. But now on the lower two-thirds of his right lung, he has reduced tactile fremitus and dullness to percussion. So decreased tactile fremitus, and dullness to percussion. What do you think in this scenario? Well, the correct answer is pleural effusion. So again, why is the tactile fremitus decreased? There's fluid there, but remember this time the fluid is outside the lung. So the sound travels down the bronchus, through the lung, hits the visceral pleura and kind of stops. Then it has to go through a layer of fluid so by the time it gets to your hand, the tactile fremitus feel is markedly decreased. And dullness to percussion makes sense because it's fluid, so it's going to be very dull when you percuss. So the correct answer for this one would be pleural effusion. Now, what if yet another patient had the following bilateral physical examination findings throughout both lungs? Decreased breath sounds, decreased tactile fremitus, and hyperresonance to percussion throughout everywhere. So what do you think on this one? Well, the correct answer here is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, but the exam findings are bilateral. Therefore, it's almost impossible to hear this and feel this clinically. If you had performed these maneuvers on a patient over time, and you could remember how it sounded and felt before, then it's possible that you could pick this up. But otherwise, when it's really hard to tell that somebody has hyperresonance or decreased tactile fremitus because it's equal bilaterally in a situation like this. What about the findings of patients with pulmonary edema and pulmonary fibrosis? 
Well, these are both usually diffuse and bilateral conditions affecting the interstitium of the lungs and sometimes spilling out into the alveoli. Therefore, the most common exam findings include crackles that can be heard in the lungs and other extrapulmonary physical exam findings. Patients with pulmonary edema will often have other signs of volume overload, such as lower extremity edema, elevated jugular venous pressures in the neck, and sometimes you can hear a third heart sound. Patients with pulmonary fibrosis often have clubbing of their fingers and toes in addition to the crackles in their lungs. You can often figure out what a patient's chest radiographs will demonstrate based on the patient's physical exam findings, particularly when you perform a complete physical exam and take a careful history as well. Thank you for watching this video. Please let us know if it was helpful. Also, please check back often for future educational offerings. Thank you very much.